So I'm often asked by beginner filmmakers, how should I structure my documentary? There are several ways you can do this, but my favorite way and the simplest is by using a three act structure. A three act structure is a model that divides a story into three parts, act one, act two, and act three, also known as the setup, the development, and the climax resolution, or even more simply put, a beginning, a middle, and an end. So why is it important to use a three act structure when making a documentary? It's important because even though you're telling a true story about real people and real events, we still need to choose which elements of the story matter most and reveal those elements in a certain order to make it emotionally compelling for audiences. Spending time developing a three act structure for your documentary before you start filming will really improve the process of shooting and editing and save you a lot of time as it will give you focus and direction and result in a more emotionally compelling story. My hope through teaching you the three act structure is that it will give you a framework with which you can plan and map out your film's journey. And as you learn more about story and begin filming, you'll have the confidence to adapt and change it as it grows and morphs from an idea into a fully fledged documentary. But it's important to note that this is not an absolute formula. As with storytelling, there are no rules, only guidelines. Use this as a starting point to help you work out the basic story structure of your documentary and feel free to adjust and adapt when needed. So how does the three act structure work? Well, as you can see in this diagram, there are six key plot points in the story that sit within the three act structure and help to give it shape. Each act has two key plot points. Within act one, there's the opening and inciting incident. Within act two, there's the first act break and the midpoint. And within act three, there's the second act break and the resolution climax. Let's break these sections down into more detail and see what each plot point represents. First up is the start of act one. We have the opening. This is where you introduce the topic and the main characters of your film, establish the central location or setting of the story and get the audience emotionally invested in the documentary. It's really important to get the audience emotionally invested in your topic and the key characters within the opening so that they'll want to keep watching the rest of your documentary to find out what's gonna happen next. For example, in my short film, One Breath, the opening is when we introduce Christina, the main character of the film, and show her doing what she loves most. We see her love for freediving in the underwater world, and we're also introduced to her relationship with her husband. This draws the audience in by giving them an insight into Christina's life, and we feel connected to her. You can also get the audience invested in the opening by raising the stakes using what's called a cold opener or a teaser sequence, which as the name suggests, is a way of teasing an intense moment that happens later in the documentary at the start of the film. This gets the audience engaged and hooked before the title sequence or opening credits are shown. This is especially important if you're releasing your film online because there's so many different things that can grab people's attention and you wanna hook them in within the first few seconds, otherwise they'll swipe to the next piece of content or the next film. In one of my favorite documentaries, Man on Wire, the filmmakers use this technique, showing the main character, Philippe Petit, and his team preparing for the illegal high wire walk between the Twin Towers. They show how dangerous what they are about to attempt is, and that failure is likely. Straight away, this gets the audience engaged with the story, as the physical life or death stakes are shown in the first few minutes of the film. Then we have the inciting incident, which is when the main character, or characters, wants and goals are identified, and some sort of obstacle gets in the way that sets the main character, or characters, off on their journey. For example, in One Breath, this is when Christina and her husband decide they want to attempt a 100 meter tandem variable weight dive which has never been done before. The obstacle is training their body to be able to achieve this incredible feat and building a sled that will help them to get to 100 meters underwater. This goal and the obstacle they must overcome sets them off on their journey. In Man on Wire, the inciting incident is when 17 year old Philippe is sitting in the dentist waiting room and sees a photo in the newspaper of the Twin Towers. Philippe starts forming an idea of wanting to walk between the Twin Towers on a high wire but the article says that the towers haven't been built yet. Seeing the photo of what the towers will look like when they're built is what creates a dream, a want inside Philippe. 
And the obstacle is finding a way to sneak into the World Trade Center and string a wire between the Twin Towers. Next is the beginning of Act 2, known as the first act break, which is when the main character or characters set off on their journey in an attempt to achieve their goal. In one breath, the first act break is when Christina's husband, Eusebia, pulls the cord to release the sled and they start their world record attempt. This is where it gets really tough as they go further and further down. In Man on Wire, the first act break is when Philippe and his team describe how they created fake IDs and then attempt to sneak into the World Trade Center for the first time. Act two is where the tension in the film builds and the audience wonder how the character or characters are ever going to resolve the challenges that lie ahead. Act two is also the largest of the three acts as it's the bulk of the story and is often double the length of act one and act three. We then have the midpoint in act two, which as the name suggests, is usually halfway through the film. This is when the protagonist is heading towards their goal and then something unexpected happens, usually a setback that deepens the stakes of the film. This is often an unexpected setback that forces the main character to look inwards and realize a flaw that they had been blind to and must change their course of direction in order to have a chance of reaching their goal. In one breath, I didn't hit the story point as well as I could have. And if I was going to make the film again, I would have spent more time developing the midpoint by asking Christina more questions about her struggles in the world record attempt and showing more footage of the struggle. It wasn't until I'd finished the film and released it that I discovered that Christina had in fact attempted this world record previously with her husband Eusebia and had failed. Christina had passed out and been sick from decompression sickness. However, while I was making the film with Christina, she didn't mention the setback as she didn't think it would really add to the story and I hadn't asked enough questions to find this out. So by not asking more questions about the hardships of achieving the world record, I missed out on an opportunity to include an additional scene that would have increased the stakes in act two and shown how dangerous the couple's attempt really was. With the midpoint, the harder a character has to work to overcome their obstacles and achieve their goal, the more satisfying their ending of the documentary will be. In Man on Wire, the midpoint is when Philippe arrives in New York and he starts preparing for the wire walk and he's got his team together. But when the day comes to actually attempt the walk, they're not ready, they've failed. Philippe is forced to go back to his home in France and rethink everything, but he won't give up. So he keeps practicing and keeps thinking of new ways to try and make it work. Next is the beginning of act three, known as the second act break, which is where your main character or characters are heading towards their goal. It's almost in their grasp and it looks like they're not going to reach their goal. It looks impossible and the stakes are lifted to full throttle. The main character or characters are forced to make a decision that they can't go back on. It's do or die. In one breath, this is when Eusebia and Christina are deep under the ocean. They've committed to this world record attempt and there's no going back. On camera, you can see Christina's and Eusebia's face contorting with the struggle and pain that they're going through. The audience is thinking, are they gonna make it? Or are they gonna die? In Man on Wire, this is when Philippe and his team have sneaked into the World Trade Center building with all the equipment. They spent hours and hours in the dead of night, rigging the wire between the two towers. And after months and months of preparation for this moment, they're not gonna be able to make it. They're not gonna be able to finish rigging the wire before day breaks. The sun rises and the wire is still incredibly slack. And now they have no way of hiding. They're going to get caught. Despite all the months of preparation, it seems like it's game over. Then we have the climax. In one breath, this is when Christina and Eusebia are swimming back to the surface of the ocean. They're almost out of air. The audience are still on tenterhooks, wondering if Christina and Eusebia are going to make it. And then finally, they reach the surface of the ocean and take a huge breath of fresh air. Everyone around them is clapping and the couple kiss to celebrate reaching their goal successfully. In Man on Wire, the climax is when Philippe and his team 
give the wire one last big tug and manage to get rid of the slack in the wire and clamp it down. Then the wheel of the elevator starts moving. This means someone is coming up on the roof. Philippe realizes he must try and attempt his dream now or never. He takes his first step. Death feels so close. He tests the wire and once he feels secure, a huge sense of happiness and relief comes over him. This is the climax, when we see him finally walking over the wire between the Twin Towers. After dreaming about this moment since he was a teenager, Philippe is finally doing it. We hear different interview accounts of the experience, but the one thing binding them together is the sense of awe, relief, and happiness that is felt by Philippe and his team. It's an extraordinary moment. We then finish with the resolution. This is when all the loose ends are tied together and the conflict between the character's wants and needs is resolved to make the audience feel complete and satisfied. The resolution of One Breath is where Christina reflects on how much joy it brings her to share all these incredible experiences with the person she loves most in the world, her husband, and that's what's most important to her. The end and resolution of Man on Wire is when Philippe finally answers the question that everyone has been asking throughout the film and the audience has been asking, why did you tightrope between the Twin Towers? Philippe replies by saying, life should be lived on the edge. Philippe believes to live a full life, you must push yourself outside your comfort zone. And Philippe is living life to the fullest, the way he knows how. So that's the three-act structure and the six key plot points within it and how you can use it to tell better stories. To help you with your documentary structure, I've put together a free three-act structure template. To get this template, just click the link in the description below then let me know what your name and email address is and I'll email the template to you. If you're struggling to structure your story, a good tip is to work backwards from Act 3 to Act 1. This way, you'll know how to set the story up. The three-act structure you create before filming is a guide. It will change as you discover more about your documentary and your characters, and it will change again once you begin editing your documentary and uncover new and interesting ways to tell your story. If you've got any questions about the 3 structure, just let me know. Otherwise, I hope you have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next video.